Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be taking you through how to assemble a team for Rogue Warriors, the modern warfare skirmish game. Now, this is part of a three-part series where we look at the core rules and how to design a mission. But let's get started with the best part of the game, and that's putting together a team. Before we do that, though, I thought it'd be cool just to quickly run through what is Rogue Warriors. So if you haven't heard about it before, this is going to give you a brief introduction, but do check out the other videos on the channel where I go into a lot more detail about the game. Okay, so first up, Modern Warfare Skirmish Game. That's what Rogue Warriors is all about, covering the time from World War II right up to modern day and a little bit beyond. It's miniature agnostic and it's era and theatre agnostic. So you can play in the desert, in the snow, urban environments, in the forest, it's up to you. And you can cover any era within the modern warfare scope. So I recommend also using it to recreate your favourite movies. The game doesn't take itself too seriously, so it's really fun to use for that kind of thing. You can also recreate your favourite games too. Then we've got fast-paced small skirmish. So the game is based around four warriors per player and you go up against each other in really fast paced action. Sometimes the rounds are limited but most of the time they're unlimited but you can really get through a skirmish quite quickly. So it makes it perfect for an evening of gaming with your friends at your club or at home. It's easy to learn and more importantly easy to teach. So if you're looking for a game to introduce players to, I think this could be a really good option. It's a little bit different to some of our other games and it's more of a traditional skirmish game which follows some more traditional rules. It's also deep as well as simple. So although it's quick to learn, easy to teach, the rules give it some depth as the choices you make really influence the tactics and how the game is played. It's player versus player predominantly, but we are introducing solo and co-op options through our narrative campaigns. So Rogue Warriors, the core rules, that's where the game starts. Nice short book that really gets you into the action quickly. And then we're going to introduce narrative campaigns like our first one, Tiger Blood, which is based on the 1990s movie Navy Seals. So that's really fun and just gives you a good idea of how we introduce stories and narratives to the game, which you can then play out in a series of missions. But the core book gives you everything you need to know to design your own missions. And we're going to cover that in part three of this series. But let's get started then and we'll have a look at exactly how to assemble a team of warriors to get started in the game. So when we assemble a team, there's a few steps to go through. First, we've got to select one team expertise. Then we're going to select our four miniatures that will form our mission team. Then we'll choose the names, not just for our team, but also for our miniatures. And then we're going to look at the characteristics and the numbers and then assign specializations before equipping them with their weapons and their gear. To get started with assembling your team, you're going to need to print off a mission team sheet. And we've got these available in the book and the PDF, but also on our website so you can easily find it. We've got a print friendly version as well. And here's a completed version. This is what you're going to be looking to put together by following all the steps in this video. So let's get started then. First, we're going to select our team expertise. So this is really going to shape how your team performs. There's six expertise altogether. You can roll randomly if you want to, or you can choose. And each one is going to bring something different to the team. You've got the expertise and a perk. And a perk is an ability that's going to enhance the performance of the team and the warriors within it. First up, we've got Raiders. So this is all about getting in quick and assaulting the target. So you're going to get plus one to your movement allowance. So that's going to give you a nice fast team. There's also Counter-Terrorism, where you can re-roll one shooting attack per round. You've got to re-roll all the dice in that shooting attack. But this symbolizes just how good they are at close combat, going in and clearing rooms, that kind of thing. Then we've got Hostage Rescue, and this is plus one to each roll-off to see which warrior team activates first in the next round. So with Hostage Rescue, it's all about getting in there, doing your recon, and then taking the enemy by surprise. And having the upper hand with the activations really plays into that theme. Then there's Counter Insurgency, and now you're going to give minus one to the opponent's activation roll once per round. And you can choose this after they've rolled it. So there's a little rule within the game that we'll cover in part three of the series, where each time you activate a warrior, it's alternate activations, but each time a player activates, they're going to roll a dice. On a one, 
the opposing player gets to choose which warrior they must activate. And a two to six, they can choose anyone they want. So there's just a little fun uh, mechanic built into the game there. But this plays into counterinsurgency where you're trying to manipulate the enemy and take control of the situation. Then you've got covert ops. So here you can extend the length and width of the deployment zone by three inches. And that just gives the idea that you're being stealthy. You're going in and you're kind of doing your recon. And so that signifies you've got a little bit of an advantage to sneak up on the enemy. And then finally, there's reconnaissance. And the idea here is you get an armor save reroll per round. And that mimics the idea that you're bunkered down maybe you've got some camouflage so you're harder to hit and harder to damage and also harder to find in the first place so that's the team expertise and so we're going to write that on our mission team sheet and we're going to just put that at the top then we're going to select four miniatures per team and you can choose some more different ones. Our favourites are Anvil Industry. We love Warlord Games miniatures. I mean, there's just so many to choose from. Infinity works great. And of course, Warhammer as well. Then we're going to choose the names. So our team designation will come up with a name for our team. And then we'll come up with names for all the different warriors within our team. And then we'll just pop each of the warriors name in here. And we'll give them a number one through four. And the leader always gets number one. Now we move on to numbers and characteristics. There are four main characteristics. These are MA, which is movement allowance, hearts, hits on, and MDP. MDP stands for melee dice pool. So you'll find that all warriors start with five inches for their movement allowance. You'll also notice that we've got W, E, and R for the other characteristics. W is warriors, E is enlisted, and R is recruit. Enlisted and recruits we're going to worry about when we get to the campaign expansions. For now, we'll just concentrate on warriors. So first up, we've got hearts. And all warriors start with six hearts. That tells us how much damage they can take. Hits on. All warriors will hit on a four plus. So whenever they make a shooting attack, they're always looking for a four plus. Then MDP. This is the melee dice pool. And you'll find out how melee works in part two of the series when we look at the core cool rules. But each warrior will start with five dice in their melee dice pool. Now we're going to enter all those characteristics onto the mission team sheet. Then we move on to step five, where we assign specializations. So we've got our expertise for the whole team, but now we want to look at all the specialists within it. You can choose all the same ones if you want to, but we certainly recommend choosing different ones and mixing it up. Whenever you start a campaign, like with Tiger Blood, you will start with 10 different specialists. So you can only choose one of each as far as that's concerned. But let's work through them quickly. We'll have a look at Tactician. So this is going to be where prior preparation really comes into the team and you can get to re-roll one dice anytime, once per round. And that's for any warrior. So you assign Tactician to one, but it applies to any warriors taking part. Then we've got Medic. And the medic will start with three med kits, but they're limited to use only one med kit per round. We've got the sniper, my favourite in any skirmish game. One shot, one kill, plus one the sniper rifle attack rolls if they haven't moved during the activation. So the idea is they've been still and they've been able to pick their targets and take their time. Then we've got hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Knife fighters can re-roll one of their melee attack dice once per melee combat. Demolitions, Jack Breacher can take three grenades into each mission and you can mix them up. So it can be frag, can be smoke, can even be flashbangs. Then we've got EOD. So we've got a ballistic shield here where you can reroll one armor save once per attack. And the idea with this is it just signifies you've got a bit more armor on there, a bit more protection. Then comms, drone recon. The team can redeploy two warriors when all fighters have been set up. And if you're playing something more towards World War II, you could imagine you've got some intel to work on here, thanks to your comms team. Then CQB, kill house, you can reroll one shooting attack dice per activation because these guys are really trained in, in close quarter battles and so they can really take their shots and are very skilled in shooting. Then there's the scout lead the way with plus one to the move allowance and then deploy up to three inches outside of the deployment zone. That's going to come into effect in certainly some of the Vietnam missions we've got planned. 
then fire support. This is really important and plays a big part in the game. You can spend a shoot action to remove any pin marker from your team once per round. And pin markers play a big part in the game, as you'll find out later in the series. All right, once we've got all those details, we're going to enter that onto our mission team sheet and then move on and equip with weapons. So for the core book, the weapons are pretty generic. We've got pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, assault rifle, light machine gun, sniper rifle, combat melee weapon and frag grenade. And so those are going to be the generic weapons. But when we do the campaigns, as you'll see in Tiger Blood, we're going to customize those so they sit, uh, they fit with the era and they match the theme of the narrative. So let's have a look. We, first of all, we have the weapon. This tells us what the weapon is. And so, for example, if it's a pistol revolver, you can name it anything you like. So you can call that pistol any kind of pistol you want that matches with the game you're playing. We've got the range, so it'd be six inches. If you look down to light machine gun, we've got three to 24. So you can't shoot anything less than three inches or anything more than 24 inches. So you've got to get within that three to 24 inch range. Then we've got our attack dice. This is how many dice we can roll when we make an attack roll. Damage is how much damage it's going to deal. And then there's armor piercing. This is the modifier that we'll apply to the armor save roll. And then the weapons will come with a perk. And here for the pistols, if two pistols or revolvers are taken, you can dual wield and change the attack dice characteristic to four. Now every warrior gets a pistol as standard, so if you wanted to choose then one weapon from the table here and you chose a pistol, this would give you that benefit. But otherwise you could start with your, your pistol or revolver and you're going to get a basic combat knife and then you can choose one other weapon from this table. There's always a drawback on the weapons as well, as you can see on some of them here, there's minus one to shooting attacks for submachine guns. And you, once you get in close though and you can avoid cover, these become pretty effective. Once we've got our weapons chosen for each of our warriors, we'll enter those on the mission team sheet. Now we're on to gear and every team starts with five points and they can spend that however they like. They can give all the gear to one warrior or they can spread it out if they want to. So you're gonna get a points value, you're going to get the gear item and then you're going to get the perk that comes with it. And the gear is going to change once we start going into campaigns. This will also be customized so it fits with the narrative as well. And that's all there is to it. We've got our mission team sheet ready. Our warriors are equipped with all their weapons and gear. So now it's time to get them ready for battle. That's now covered everything you need to know to get your warriors ready for battle. So now it's time to look at campaigns and the core rules. So it'd be great if you come and join me for those other videos where I'll take you through all the core rules and then we'll look at campaigns in detail. In this core game, you're going to get three campaigns and you can see that they're going to be for different eras. So we've got 2024, 2012 and 1943, just to give you an idea of the scope of the game. You can also find in the book how to design your own missions and we provide a mission builder table which gives you everything you need to design thousands of different combinations so you can never run out of missions to play with the game. But we do come out with our narrative campaigns and this is the big part of the game. We've got the core rules with Rogue Warriors, a modern warfare skirmish game and then our narrative campaigns like Tiger Blood is what the game's really going to be about going into the future. So if you just want a quick game that's easy to learn, easy to teach, grab Rogue Warriors and you're going to have fun playing and coming up with your own missions. But if you want something where you can play out a campaign in a day or even a long evening, then I think things like Tiger Blood are going to be really fun. In Tiger Blood, you're going to get six missions all together. And these follow a storyline. And this is loosely based on the 1990s movie Navy Seals. And so it's real fun. I love that movie. And I love creating little skirmishes and missions based on movies from the past. And I think this is something we're going to do a lot of going forward. It's really fun to be influenced by things like this. Now, the game doesn't take itself too seriously, especially this mission, but still, you're choosing to play either as a special operations team or the terrorist team as you track down these Stinger missiles. Within that campaign, we've got information about the special operations teams and also we've customized those weapons and there's a few other rules as well. So each narrative campaign is going to introduce some simple rules that really match with the era and the theater of war. And for a campaign, you'll build a platoon and then from that platoon, you'll put together your teams. 
The weapons will also be themed as you can see here. So all the names of the weapons and we might change some of the perks and drawbacks as well. And we'll certainly play around with the gear so it fits in. So that's it. We've gone through everything you need to know to assemble your team. Really simple. In the book, it's just a couple of pages. You work through the steps and you're good to go. The next video, I go through all the core rules so you'll find out everything you need to know to play your first game of Rogue Warriors. And then in the third part of the series, I'll take you through how to design a mission using the mission builder table and the information. It's only a couple of pages, but with everything included in there, like the deployment zones and that table, you can just come up with thousands of different combinations. So really great fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and now you know how to assemble your team. I'd love to hear how you get on with the game and I'd love to see your team as well. So take a photo, come and join us on our Facebook group page and share it. It'd be awesome to see it. There's loads more videos up on the channel if you want to check them out. Not just the how to play series. We also look at miniatures, terrain, scatter terrain and all different aspects of the game. And there's some videos that give you an overview of Rogue Warriors, Tiger Blood and much more. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. There's some great perks on there now as we're bringing out more of our games like Population Z, Rogue Warriors, Weekend Warriors and soon Lunaria Chronicles. So head over there, there's a link down below where you can find out more. We'd love to see you on our Patreon.